It says you have the faith of Christ. Romans chapter 12, verse 3, the last part of that verse says, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith, not a measure. I'm aware that some of the translations say a measure, but if you get the real one, it says the measure, amen. And then Paul talked about this over in Galatians chapter 2. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Not by faith in the Son of God, but by the faith of the Son of God. If Paul had the faith of Christ and there's only one measure, then guess what? You have the faith of Christ. And 2 Peter chapter 1, the apostle Paul, uh, Peter was speaking and he said, Simon Peter, an apostle to them who have obtained, have obtained, not can obtain, might obtain, can request. No, you have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Peter wrote that entire epistle to people that had like precious faith. If you look that up in the Greek, it means identical precious faith. The same in quantity and quality. You don't have immature faith. Now you may not be able to use it because faith is based on knowledge. It goes on to say in 2 Peter chapter 1, the very next verse, verse 2 says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of him that has called you to glory and virtue. And then verse 3 says, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. All things that pertain to life and godliness come through knowledge. If you're having a problem, you've got a knowledge problem. That's what it says. Everything that pertains unto life and godliness, that includes healing, prosperity, deliverance, joy, peace, anything you want to name, anything you need comes through the knowledge of Him. And then verse 4 says whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. So the knowledge of God gave us these exceeding great and precious promises. Talking about the Word. So the Word of God is the knowledge of God and everything that pertains unto life and godliness comes through this knowledge. You've already got everything you will ever need in your spirit. Man, I wished I could talk faster than I am. I've meditated on these things for over 53 years. And I'm trying to share stuff with you that every time I say something, I could share dozens and dozens of teachings that I have on each one of these things. But you, your spirit's already complete. When it says that you are complete in Him, that doesn't mean complete like a baby has all of the parts, but it needs to grow. You, as Jesus is, so are you right now. Jesus is not an immature baby that's having to grow. Your spirit is complete and pure and holy and righteous and full of faith as Jesus is. You don't need anything else in your spirit. But it only flows through your knowledge. What you don't know is killing you. If you can imagine right now that up above my head is like a pipe up here and over on this side is the spirit and that spirit's born again. It's identical to Jesus as Jesus is. So are we in this world. We have the mind of Christ. We have an unction. We know all things. Everything I've been talking about over here is true. But over here is the pipe and there's like a spout here. And for that, for that life that's in your spirit, to come over here and come out through your body, your mind is like a valve. And your mind can shut off the flow of the Spirit of God that's on the inside of you. Or it can open up and just let a little bit through at a time. Or you can open it up and let it be a gusher that comes out. It's all dependent upon your mind. Your mind is the valve that controls the flow of the Holy Spirit. And so even though if you're born again, old things have passed away, all things have become new, and in your spirit realm, you are identical to Jesus. This is why you can do the same works that Jesus did. You've got everything that you'll ever need. You, know, you aren't in the process of asking God to please touch you and give you more. You're in the process of renewing your mind to release what God has already placed on the inside of you. 
And let me just tell you, my own personal testimony is that I used to, you know, beg, oh God, what do I have to do to get back into that place? Touch me again, move again. And it was desperation and it was defeat. But when I begin to understand the things that I'm sharing with you, it is so much easier to release something that you believe you already have than it is to go get something that you don't have. That's a big word right there. Let's say, let's say that this is healing right here. And I'm over here and I said, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to be healed. I will be healed. I'm headed towards healing. Did you know those sound good? But that means I'm not there. And something could happen. I could move that direction. I could trip and fall. Somebody could come up here and tackle me. And if healing is over there, and if I'm here, then that means that I may not get it. But if I'm already here, how can you keep me from getting where I already am? I'm not trying to be healed. I've already been healed. I'm not fighting to be healed. I'm fighting because I have been healed and I have the same power on the inside of me that raised Jesus Christ from the dead and because I know that and I've learned things about how to release it, there aren't enough demons in hell to keep me from walking in what God has already given me. You know, I had a son that when he was one year old, he fell and hit his head on the corner of a table, a coffee table. It was a corner like this and he fell and hit himself right here. And the thing swelled up and got like two or three inches big like water and stuff. And we prayed over it and he had a lot of pain with it and it went away. But he was one year old at the time. And did you know for the next 12 years on the exact same day, every year, that thing would come back. That doesn't even make sense to me. I think it was more spiritual than it was physical. But every year that thing would come back and we would pray over it. And finally, when he was like 12 years old, we were doing a devotion right before they went to bed. And I saw that thing coming back and I started to get in and no, and, I, and fighting. Oh God, please touch him. That's the way I'd been doing it for 12 years. And finally, I just looked at him and I said, devil, you are so stupid. I said, I'm not giving up. We're already healed. I'm not going back on this. And I just stood and proclaimed what was already ours. And did you know, boom, like that, it was gone and it never came back.